Well, I think the Occupy movement has everything to do with finding ways to take all the parts of our society that have been compartmentalized and integrating them back into our awareness. So at an ecological level, this is recognizing that an economy that is predatory and growth-based is not just causing trouble at an economic level, it's also causing trouble at an ecological level. And so we have to include ecology, which is the shadow of our capitalist economy, um, as part of the dialogue around what this movement is trying to um, reimagine. At a social level, there are parts of our society we've compartmentalized. And so one of the things that's happening in uh, parks like this and squares all over the world is that when various people come together, then they show each paradigm that we adhere to is shadow. So if I have a certain ideology and someone else has a certain ideology, we have to learn how to communicate. So I think the Occupy movement is the, the springing back into consciousness of the things that we've discarded. And we, we need them. We, we, the 1% need us, you know? And the fish need us, and the forests need us, and the parts of our community that we haven't been communicating with uh, need us. And all this is coming to the surface now. And that's what's so exciting. And that's also why it's hard to get a handle on exactly what this is. Because uh, this is just the beginning of a um, of movement of inclusion. There's always a natural resistance to stillness and a natural resistance to new patterns of imagination, primarily because there's a human resistance to change. We like getting in a groove and staying in that groove. And so naturally, as this resistance grows in momentum, there are going to be people who actively repress it because it's threatening. Social change doesn't happen just through persuasion. It doesn't through happen through small sound bites. Uh, and it also doesn't happen through Twitter. Uh, it happens by really putting our bodies here face to face with others and making change by listening and dreaming together. Love is not just a feeling. It's what emerges when we give each other our face, when we give each other our attention, when we give each other the space to really listen to a diversity of viewpoints. And I think so often we talk about difference as something we have to tolerate. But what's happening in the Occupy movement through the human microphone, the general assembly, committees, feeding people, the development here of a gift economy, is that in the process we're cultivating intimacy that's arising out of difference. And that intimacy is this spark that I would call love. And it's what's carrying us, and it's what's warming us up, and it's the reason why we're going to win.